Hello, I'm Eli Karl, and today I want to talk about something that is on my mind and my heart for a pretty long time. I was initially thinking about writing that topic, but I don't know. I want to speak my mind um, and I feel it's more better, more freely when I'm just uh, talking about it. So here it goes. It is about violence in video games. Violence. Violence or more broad um, also violence in our entire entertainment topic. Um, you see, the, the point was really coming to my mind again uh, lately uh, when, uh, you know, when I got in myself a new shiny new laptop which really brought me some new muscle and uh, so I was looking at Steam to buy some cool looking computer game for my uh, laptop and I was browsing through various games I had in mind. I had heard of, for instance, Far Cry 3, which is said uh, to be one of the most uh, graphically stunning um, computer games of our times. And it probably is. I remember when I, that I've played Far Cry 1 years ago, which was really pretty impressive back then. And I was watching video reviews, one from Angry Joe and another one, I think, from IGN. And as you may know, Far Cry got pretty positive reviews. And from a merely intellectual point of view, I can very well understand why this is so. Far Cry, I didn't play it yet. I just saw video reviews, so take it with a grain of salt. But... It seems to be really an immersive and detailed computer game. But there is one meta level, I must say, where I really stepped back and I felt appalled by violence. Now, before you jump at me and say, oh, it's one of those pacifists and peaceful uh, types and I say no stop it I played shooters and computer games with violence as one of the main topics for I don't know 25 years um, I still remember when the first three-dimensional ego perspective um, shooter type of games uh, came onto market one of some of the older guys may still remember games like Hexen or Heretic which are the first two uh, ego perspective 3D games where you really are in a three dimensional environment shooting stuff given it was more on the magical sorry on the magical edge but um I've played a ton of these games um and I'm, I play war strategy games where I wipe entire civilizations. So I'm really not the peaceful type who generally abhors violence or uh, I'm not a pacifist in real life either. I think that v peaceful solutions are better, but if you ask me for my personal ethics, I think there are things which are worth fighting for. Ideals. Uh, I will leave that topic as it is, but uh, what I want to emphasize is that I'm really not one of those uh, preacher types to say, oh, the evil violence, uh, and especially not um, beating that uh, presumably dead horse like, oh, the evil video game violence. But in recent years, I don't know, this impression began to trickle into my mind and one thing I really was pondering about for the last I don't know two years or so is the question did I change or did video games change? I'm still not entirely clear about the answer I really would like to know about this especially from the older people I'm 42 so something about my generation uh, because they knew movies, TV series in the old times, the same as I did, and have maybe a similar perspective or a totally opposing perspective, which, not that the opinion of younger people would be of less importance to me, but um, trying to get uh, a clearer answer if I changed or not, it is, of course, a question of reference. And that 
demand demands from me to bring it a little bit into a broader perspective and go beyond uh, the mere area of uh, video games for a moment. And this, uh, the two or three topics where I can look at uh, to compare what has happened with me as a consumer and uh, media uh, per se are movies, TV and comics. Those are three areas of entertainment where we can look at what happened in the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Um, I had my teenage times in the 1980s and compared to that I really have the impression that um, violence went out of the roof. It's totally over the top today. I'm sorry, I can't say it in any other way and I'm not saying again that uh, violence is per se bad uh, or, or that it would uh, incite people to become criminals or such crazy things. That's far from me to say. But still I think should we as gamers not at some point look at our hobby, step back a bit, look at it seriously and look at what is happening. I mean if you haven't played Far Cry 2, uh, 3, just take a time, go to YouTube, watch a few gameplay videos or review videos. And it's the detail that is really reaching a point where I feel is that necessary. Does that make the game more interesting? I mean, you see tigers are not just attacking you, you just don't see them just jumping at you like you saw in video games five years, ten years or twenty years ago. No, you see them, they claw into your arm, a blood flows out of your arm, you see sharks not just jumping at you, they, they claw into your legs and into your hand and I saw the guy having a shark tool sticking out of his hand or if he f flew down with a glider and he broke his his thumb and his uh, thumb was really in a horrible bad angle and there was a knack he was um, uh, putting it back into shape and such a small details but I really thought again is that necessary and what does it signal and is that an example of of, of how video games changed and I know that Violence has always been a big part in video games and by and large I'm okay with that. That's not the point. But in the last few years, ever when the new month started and I felt that I had some money to spend on a, a new game, I went to Steam, I went to Amazon and whatnot and ever so often I thought, no, I don't want to spend my money on this or that or this. and. One of my impressions, more emotionally instinctive, I must uh, admit, than that I really uh, studied it in detail or, or made lists or, or counted it, was how much dominant, gloomy, grim, dark, war topic games dominate today. I mean, if you go to Final Fantasy games, to take an example that probably everyone knows. The topic in Final Fantasy is war, violence and gloominess, just the same. But if you take a video game like Far Cry compared to it, or if you take a video game like, uh, what did I see, a uh, trailer of The Line, the Spec Ops uh, thing, it's these games have uh, gone away from this fantastic fantasy level or fantastic doesn't have to be fantasy in the sense of wizards, elves and dwarves. I mean fantasy in the broader sense including sci-fi, fantastic realities and so forth. Um, they've stepped away from that and I have the feeling like a lot of these games are playing in the present time or in a alternative version of the present time. Like take Spec Ops The Line where you have an, a virtual a, a war-like scenario which uh, reflects the war on terror topic that we have today and um, the political 
tone in these games is always very nihilistic, very negative, very gloomy, like a very grim reflection of our own time. And yes, nihilistic is probably the most um, vivid impression that these games give to me. They are no longer about hope, about a bringing something good to a dark time. I mean, take the old Ultima games, if you know that other, other Might, and, yeah, Might and Magic wasn't such a good example. Wizardry games, if you remember this. Any role-playing games, or most role-playing games, say from the 1980s, 1990s. Stuff like Baldur's Gate, which probably you know better. There was a dark, gloomy situation. There was war, there was violence, there was... But you didn't need... If you remember Baldur's Gate and fighting against Cerevok, you didn't need to see gory details to be immersed in the story, to be impressed by the dark situation in which you were. It, I mean, for heaven's sake, it were tiny, small, pixel characters. And still, at least I and a lot of people back then were totally invested into the story, into the darkness into the dire situations. It wasn't all roses, daisies, unicorns and rainbows in these games, really not. But um, it wasn't gloomy in the sense that it felt hopeless. There were always cheerful people and funny situations to, to lighten the mood for a bit. And there is a big difference in all the entertainment stuff or a lot of the entertainment stuff I see today. And the prime example I can give, which probably all of you know, is Star Wars. The old trilogy versus the new trilogy. That is for me the, the typical and most popular or most known example of old drama versus new drama. The old trilogy take characters like Chewbacca, Han Solo, their witty dialogues. Really, the old Star Wars trilogy was gloomy, it was dark, it was dangerous. I mean, heck, Luke lost his hand in a uh, in this really dramatic uh, s s scene with his father, Darth Vader. And that was dark, that was horrible for us back then. But you didn't see any gory details beyond, okay, it was gory in a sense, but not in the sense that it is today, not with all the details uh, that we are shoved in the face today. And there was still hope, there was still fun and uh, humor and some light heart moments to, to balance it. Or take the moment, the famous moment where Han Solo is uh, frozen in carbonite, this, 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 this witty bantering where Leia finally bursts out, I love you, and uh, he just says, I know. I mean, that is how drama and uh, it was in the past. It was balanced. It was not over the top serious and grim. And then, if you take the the new trilogy, the the the, the so-called prequels, there is nothing funny. I mean, I don't want to go into the entire Jar Jar Binks debate, but um, no matter what you think about Jar Jar Binks, Jar Jar Binks is just a, a clownesque uh, excuse. It's not really integrated into the movie and everyone felt that, that, that Jar Jar Binks was just an alien, in a sense, part of the entire story. And I remember when Mark Hamill was uh, interviewed when the first movie, Star Wars 1, The Phantom Menace, uh, was released and the first reaction of Mark Hamill was exactly like mine, because Mark Hamill in the interview said, oh my god, is that serious now? And that is exactly the point. The seriousness that is dominant in all these entertainment stuff, be it movies or a TV to a degree, comics very much. If you are into comics, Superman, Batman, X-Men, whatever it may be, the development is exactly the same and I'm still not entirely sure if I got more sensitive to these topics or if, I, or if the uh, stuff just changed, but let's say I am 
80 to 20 certain that the stuff changed and that maybe I got a little bit more sensitive to the topic but not really much. No, not really. If you remember TV, movies, comics from the 1980s, you just can't deny that the stuff got all way more serious, way more gloomy. And sometimes I wonder, I'm not a conspiracy type of guy, but sometimes when I see all these comics are dark and gloomy, all these movies, all these games, or many of them, I sometimes uh, uh, wonder in a dark corner of my brain uh, what the heck of a message uh, some people are trying to send us. Uh, I mean, really, I don't want to go into this uh, deeper because uh, that soon will smell like conspiracy ideas when I say that uh, does here someone have an agenda to uh, to make us give up, to feel us that all is worth nothing? I don't know. It's I'm not going seriously about this. It's just an idea that sometimes comes into my mind when I saw the the vast mass of of, of negative storytelling um, today. Or take a popular um, a TV series like Game of Thrones. I don't want to spoil the last episodes of the second season if people haven't seen it yet, but it's a fascinating TV show. It's really a TV show worth watching, but it so fits into everything we watch today. Gore, blood, you see details, people are... You'd not just hear that he was tortured, or take Han Solo when he was tortured by Darth Vader. You see him lying on some rack, uh, chained to it, uh, you see some uh, dangerous looking medical instruments coming down to he him and then the screen, the screen goes black, you hear him cry and it is left to your imagination. That was 1982, I think it was. Today you would see every detail and you wouldn't just see a worn out, beaten uh, 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 Harrison Ford coming back into uh, uh, the, 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 the ch chamber as afterwards. No, you would see every bloody detail plucked out, uh, uh, toenails, I don't know what, I want to spare you the details here, but you can imagine if you've seen movies in recent times. And I wonder, is the drama really improved? Is the storytelling really improved if you see all these details? And my answer is, fuck no, sorry. It really isn't. I mean, in the past we had movies and games like that too. There was, I think its name was Wolfenstein, uh, was a very uh, uh, ill-reputated game in 1980s, I think, which was said to be relatively violent because you say, saw blood pixels or I don't know. What, I never played the game. It's just what I know from hearsay when I was in school and uh, some of my buddies were speaking about it in such a hushed tone where you knew that, oh, it's something forbidden. And same was with movies, I don't know, uh, Friday the 13th or such stuff existed back then too. But it was a niche market, something that you just could buy uh, under the table, you see. And today I have the impression like almost such a level is mainstream. And seriously, I wonder why this is so. Because for me, it doesn't make the story more interesting. It doesn't add more that I feel more immersed into the into the uh, uh, game or movie. Or take the recent uh, Wolverine, the newest the Wolverine uh, movie. It's just the same. You have so much emphasis on violence. We had action movies in the past too, but. They weren't so much focused on on violence, on on gore, on seeing each bloody detail um, in high definition. I don't know what this signals, and this is what I really want to understand. Why is this so? Have the masses of people become so thick skin, so dense, so overfed that they need an ever excessive rise of the stakes to still be awed. Is that the explanation? Uh, then it would be the question if we could not step back from this 
being overfed with more and more violence and, until people are so desensitized and so thick-skinned uh, that they really need to see even more horrible torture, even more horrible mutilation details to even feel the drama of a story. And the other topic which really came to my mind in recent months was this. If we look at our society, I think we can safely say we never had so much uh, a demand, an ethic of peacefulness and, shall we say, feminine values of introspection, of peacefulness, of non-manliness, of non-aggressiveness, of talking about everything, um, taking yourself back and not being aggressive, not being what was in past decades seen as manly, uh, virile uh, virtues. We have a very, from our expectations, a very, I don't take this word too seriously, but what I call feminine values, female values. We have a very manliness, virile virtues are really, have a very negative view in our days. It's a little bit difficult to explain this in, in English, sorry, it's not my first language. I hope you get the impression right. I'm not talking about how men or, or women are. I'm just talking about this idea that we so much value today that or suppose or expect of people today to be peaceful, to be introspective, to be passive, to be peaceful in all times to a point where even uh, uh, just fights, fights for justice, are seen with suspicious suspicion and uh, even every healthy dose of aggression is totally neglected to people or denied to people. And these natural impulses of aggression, the natural uh, manliness of, of, of man um, is denied very much. So I see that for many male gamers, I'm quite sure that video games and movies to a degree, are more video games, are like a sort of refugee, maybe, a sort of to balance all the, the pressure of everyday society not to express their natural manly aggression, and so they balance it with an equal, uh, over-the-top going manliness in these video games. It's just a, a theory, and I'm not saying it is so, but that is something that really came to my mind because the more peaceful we demand, the more passive feminine we demand of, of people to be, of, of men to be, the more over-the-top excessive depiction of violence and gore in video games and also in comics and uh, movies, which are three topics which are very typical manly guys' uh, hobby spheres. A lot of more men are reading these types of action comics. A lot of, a lot of more men are playing these types of video games. I'm not saying uh, this has to be so, or why is this so. There are interesting series about these, just the same. Side note, go to Jimquisition, which really talks, uh, uh, makes some interesting videos about that topic. But the reality is that it is so that these kind of action games are mostly played by, by guys, by men. And maybe this tells us something about where we stand. I'm not even going so far where we're going wrong, or maybe we should sometimes question if we are going wrong with both extremes. There is a thought I want to to leave you to think about for yourself because I cannot give answers about this which are really uh, 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 final answers. I have my ideas about this and I think there is um, a connection between a society where every manly expression of man is suppressed and I wouldn't say forbidden but a bit, little bit like a taboo and where we try to re-educate men into being less man, less of a man. Where we have 
sort of what I say called feminine values um, and how this is maybe that guys go over the top or seek over the top aggressive manliness in the entertainment to counter this. This is something where really is really circulating in my mind these days how this maybe is connected and I'm not a friend of either extreme um, I think that men have their own ways. They are more aggressive by nature, I'm quite sure about this. There certainly are men who are not, and there are certainly women who are aggressive and others who are peaceful, but in the, in the mass, in the broad sense, I think it is still true that nature made man more aggressive, and it's probably for a reason, and we can argue about this, but it's my assumption. So. We don't have a society where men have any opportunity to live that anymore. I mean, look at uh, risky sports, uh, which really is getting more and more pop popular in these days, because in real life there is no more space to live that manly character. We are not in the era of, of, of cowboys anymore. We are not in the era of, I don't know, where, where some sort of wild freedom really existed. I mean, okay, you can go out in the forest, go hunting or whatever. That's still possible, at least in America, not so much in, in Europe, I can tell you. But I am sure that there is a connection here, that there is something out of balance on both sides, where society is not unconnected with games, and games say a lot about society. I know that especially gamers are preferring to be disinterested into these topics I respect that you can enjoy your games do it by all means I'm really not criticizing that but maybe there are some gamers who also sometimes feel okay something is going on here and I don't know but it's out of whack it's out of balance it goes into a direction which becomes more and more extreme and more maybe as consumers of video games and, and movies we should come to a point where we become alert, aware of what is going on, and we are, we are not just driven and, and passive uh, consumers of everything that is shoved into our face, because I don't know, it adds, I, I don't think it adds really quality anymore, and I'm really beginning to worry about what it is doing with us. Not us as individuals so much, because I don't think there is a connection that you can clearly say, okay, I've watched too many violent movies, so i become a violent person. I know that's bollocks. But it is certainly doing something with us as society, as a culture. I'm damn sure about this. You can't permanently watch violence, real or, or, or imaginary, in games, movies or in TV news, um, without having an impact. It has an impact. If you constantly see more and more violence, it does something to your mind, it does something to people, it does something to us as a society. And I'm sorry, I don't want to uh, go into the same direction as saying, oh, it's the evil video games and the evil movies. Really not. But I seriously feel that we are reaching a point in our entertainment industry as a whole, where we as consumers have to step back sometimes and say, is that necessary? Is that really better? Do we really need this, this detail of mutilation, of war, of blood, of this fixation on war and, and, and blood and depressive stories and bad endings and everything goes to hell uh, ideals? I mean, remember when we had uh, this uh, Mayan calendar thing where everyone was fantasizing about uh, the end of the world. I know that the majority of people didn't really expect the end of the world, but it was a symptom for me. I felt that a lot of people were ex almost expecting, oh, let something cool, catastrophic happen so we escape from our dull everyday life. Every catastrophe, every disaster uh, would be better than this dull, everyday, 
life which leads to nothing. It, it's maybe just a little over the top if I say it that way, but I remember some historian write about the outbreak of World War I, something very similar. You must know before 1914 when uh, World War I erupted, there was in Central Europe a very long time of peace and economic prosperity and things were very orderly and very set and that historian wrote that the people, a lot of people went cheering into the war, went ecstatic into the war like finally the over-regulated, the over-orderly, the over the top uh, regulated and orderly society was breaking up like it was some excitement, some adventure that people would go into and only when they realized what war was really like they were of course uh, changing their view but this type of uh, psychological me mechanism seems to be something that is exists in human society still when we live in Europe and America in a relatively long time of peace and mostly prosperity now we take the recent crisis, okay, it's a little bit of a different thing, but uh, given the big crises in, in past uh, uh, centuries, we still can say that we live in a relatively orderly reality. And maybe there comes a time when humans are just tired of order, they're just tired of peace, they're just tired of the, all the same routine going on, and they have this notion like, oh, let's have some chaos. Let's have some destruction. Everything is better than this ongoing uh, regulated life. And this is understandable. I too have this feeling sometimes, but we must be aware where we are going with such wishes. You know the saying that is always be careful what you wish because it is what you may get. And I don't want to scare people now of, of stuff, but I just tell you all this so maybe we are looking a little bit more aware of our entertainment at our entertainment on video games on movies because seriously I don't want this to go on this way if I imagine that movies or video games are in the next 20 years as much more violent bloody and uh, detailed in gore and mutilation as they had become in the last 20 years. I swear I'm not going to watch or play any of this st stuff anymore. Seriously. It's really reached a point where entertainment more drags me down than builds me up. And it just beats the point of, of, of playing all these games. I want to feel better. Hell, if I want to feel negative, I watch TV news. That's just enough negativity as I can, as I can get. Okay, I'm leaving the thought as it is. I really would be interested in how you feel about the development on this topic in the entertainment industry at large and especially in, 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 in video games. If you see it totally different or maybe you have similar impressions about the entire. I know a lot of gamers prefer to not think about this. I respect, I respect this, it's okay, but um, I really think that comes there are times sometimes coming where you have to stop uh, yourself and look at what you're doing. And I think the rise of, of violence is really a point in, in, in entertainment where I think it is time that we stop and, 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 and look a bit at what we're doing. Not with too much uh, drama, but I think it is really time to do that. So let me hear your thoughts. That's it for now. Stay well.